Tonight's episode of Twits is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Uh, Twits aren't better. A little drum, a little metal church. And boom, here we go. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the week three edition of Twits. Joining us once again from his palatial estate in Brownwood, Texas, with three luxury sleds parked in the driveway, Mr. Paul McKeskey. How are you tonight, sir? Howdy. Howdy. Things are things are going well. Like, How are you? Good. You're like a white Kendrick Perkins or something. I don't know what's going on here. It's a little football. Oh, there it is. Okay. You look like you're supporting like the Celtics. Actually, what's, what's, what what jersey is that? That's my uh, Cerveza. Oh, Cerveza. Hey, you should trademark that. All right. Um, <laughs> it's hot down here. It's not up here, Mike. We got about uh, 30 mile an hour winds right now. It's brisk. It's brisk. Um, Mike, let's get right to the uh, SFFL news and notes for week three. Um, new free agency schedule went into effect this week, and so I'll be approving those right after this twist, and then we'll have. Uh, Free agent, uh, free agent Friday, which is really free agent Wednesday through Saturday, which will be kicking off tomorrow at 6 a.m. So, someone tickles your fancy out there, go ahead and uh, grab them for 10 bucks starting tomorrow. Um, and that's a fire sale. It. We got a fire sale. Yeah, it is a fire sale. All free um, agents, ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Everything must go, and. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Other than that, no major news and notes other than uh, the NFL needs to definitely change its rules on uh, what you can do to a quarterback these days. I'm getting a little bit annoyed. Yeah, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw that form tackle equals penalty. And I do follow you on Twitter. At Michael T 47 right? Correct. All right. Uh, Mike, let's uh, break into a little segment uh, we here at Twits like to call the Weekly Rewind. Um, Mike, let's take a look at the week that was. We had week two. We had uh, Fred taking on Wayne, and uh, Wayne unleashes hell. 77 points for Bago. We're going to have to led ship by, off a 12 pack up there to Bago, huh? Yeah, led by uh, yeah, Shinerbach. Led by uh, 19 out of Peterson, uh, takes out Fred's uh, 27. Uh, he got 12 from Aaron Rodgers to lead the way. Uh, the commission took out Evan. Um, Drew Brees got him 14 points to lead the way on uh, the commission's team. And uh, David Akers registered a, a 7 for Evan. And that rhymes. And, uh, that's, uh, that's back-to-back 12 packs. Yeah, back-to-back. Uh, obviously, Evan got a little bad luck there with um, Jamal Charles going down. Um, in a uh, in a literally a shootout, uh, Greg Hitman Hodgson, eighty one points to take out uh, to take out uh, the the Brownwood Beast there, Mike Paddock, eighty one seventy nine, uh, matching uh, seventeen point outings from Hillis and Best. Yeah, for the playing. Video. Playing the part of uh, the commission this year will be Mike Paddock losing with the uh, fourth highest score in the league. Yeah, well, yeah, that that rule has uh, multiple facets. Um, you know, generally the precursor is that you play the highest scoring team in the week, which you did not do. Um, but yeah, it, there's several sub rules. <laughs> um, that takes out Mickey, sixty to fifty-three. Uh, Vincent Jackson uh, registering 20 points there. Darren McFadden chipping in with 18 for Mickey. And uh, Tom, uh, just like last week, uh, takes out uh, someone with uh, more than 80 points. 84 to 63 over Tim. Uh, Miles Austin and his three touchdowns leading the way over Garrett Hartley and his 13 points in that matchup. Mike, let's take a look at uh, what's coming up uh, on tap for week number three. Well, on tap, we have the uh, last two unbeatens going at it. Thad, Thad with 120 points thus far, and Tom with 167. And Tom does lead that series one, or sorry, 1117 points to Thad's 
1087. And he leads the series 17 to 14, winning seven of the last ten matchups to get to that point. That's right. And then uh, battle of the single losses here. We have Jeff versus Greg. Jeff bringing his 118 into Greg's house with uh, 123 this year. You're still leading that series points 1165 to one or sorry 1114, and the all-time series 16 14 and one. That's right. But Greg has won the last three matchups. Yeah, well, that's about that. Oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake earlier. That's the only, the top one was the uh, only matchup between unbeatens, because Wayne is still unbeaten as well with his 140 points. And I'm bringing my 133. He does lead uh, the all-time points on that 793 to 746. And the series 14 to 9, but I have won three of the last four. Let's we'll see if we can... Uh, Get off the schneid here and get myself a win again. That's called Uncle Mo. <laughs> you got Uncle Mo. One of the other uh, non-winners, unwinners, unwinnables, Fred going up against Mickey. Fred, 76 points. Mickey, 110. No previous matchups, so we'll see what happens and see if Fred can get things together here. And then Evan going against Tim. Evan has 86 points this year to Tim's 109, but Tim is 0-2 and, and Evan is 1-1. One one. Tim does lead that series 10-43 to Evan's 901, and he leads the all-time series 16 to 11, winning seven of the last nine. Hmm. Very so, interesting. Good luck on the uh, good luck on your picks. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think we. Uh, I think Tom has pulled ahead of me in the confidence pool uh, standings heading into week three. I believe he's up on me by a point. Um, Mike, let's take a look at some of the records that were set in the supple in week uh, two. Uh, we had a uh, all-time record set, most wide receiver points, 154 between all owners. So as a as a group, averaging almost 16 points uh, per receiver grouping. Um, we also set the number two running back points all time with 175. Um, Mike, you and uh, you and Ho put up 160 points in your matchup. That's good for number two all time. Tom put 30, uh, 38 receiver points on the board again. Dang near, uh, I can't remember what he had last week. But it was something close to that. Uh, that's good for third all time. Um, Let's take a look here. Tom and Tim, 147 points, good for fourth place all time. And uh, tight end points, those were uh, not sparse. 58 between all owners, good enough for ninth place. So a top 10 finish there. So plenty of records set in week number two. Mike, uh, premium content, all you got to do is listen to this podcast. I am. And, uh, yeah, uh, by default, and you're doing a hell of a job. Everyone uh, fears up for Mr. Mike Paddock, who, unbeknownst to most of you, does uh, pretty much all the editing on this. You know, I'll take credit for some of the graphics, but all the the complete package here, you see, all the accoutrement is all Mr. Mike Paddock. So thank you for that. Uh, so you want access for. Uh, premium content, all I have to do is watch this and uh, for next week you'll type in the password DUNTA <laughs> D-U-N-T-A. Is it going to cost us 40 grand? It will not cost you 40 grand, it costs you nothing Mike. Uh, so this week uh, CBAS, next week starting Tuesday, you'll type in DUNTA and that will get you all the premium content you need. Mike, let's look at uh, everyone's tertiary favorite uh, segment the Chalk Talk. You know, once I got back to the college game, um, uh, big winner, big winner last week, Kansas State. They were laying 17 and a half, and they uh, hosted Kent State and uh, proceeded to put a 34 and nothing beat down on them. So easy money there. Uh, this week, Mike, we're gonna we're gonna travel down your way, and we're gonna go to I believe a little town called Waco, Texas, and that's where the Baylor Bears reside. Sikkim Bears, they are laying 20 and a half against Rice, or Slice as they call them in the business. Uh, I, I I think they might be up 
21 or so at the end of the first quarter, and I don't see it getting much closer. Uh, Robert Griffin, the third, and his receiving core should have no problem covering that 21 and a half. Look for Baylor to win that game by 30 points, Mike, and move the commission to 2-0 and on the year, as we're not counting the NFL pick uh, week one there. That is a big uh, call. Mike, last week, the dog of the week came through <laughs> once again. I, I, everyone in this league should be filthy, stinking rich between uh, Chalk Talk and Dog of the Week, mostly Dog of the Week, if you were playing from last year. Uh, Atlanta, you know, who needs the points? Got two and a half, but you don't need them. Atlanta wins outright by four. Uh, what do you got cooking uh, week number three here? Yeah, I'm on a roll. Unfortunately, my fantasy quarterback in all three leagues is uh, out. <laughs> But I did get the win on the dog. He's not out. He's not out yet. He's yeah. potentially out. All right. I saw his tweet. He said, uh, "See you in a couple weeks." So we'll see what happens. Yeah, but he's okay. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> that means he's okay. Yeah. But we are going to have to wait. You still lay all the money you got, but we're going to have to wait till Monday night to see how this one pans out. We have yeah. Washington Redskins traveling into Dallas, the friendly confines of Texas. And getting four and a half against your battered and beaten Cowboys. I say take the Redskins to scalp them boys. And there's your dog All of the week. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's it, uh, Jerry's Palace there. Uh, Dallas certainly beat up at this point, so uh, no qualms from the commish there. And as that is, this week's game of the week, Mike, um, I, I think you've already established which side of the equation you're going to go on. Um, but I'm going to call him not so fast, my friend. <laughs> uh, copyright lead course. So, and I'm going to take the Cowboys. Um, I think the uh, the Sexy Rexy train and the Tim Hightower train are about to come off the tracks. Uh, there's not a lot of empirical data to back that up, but I think the Cowboys win. I, I agree. I don't think they'll win by four and a half, but I certainly uh, I think that's going to be a tight game, and it sounds like Romo's going to give it a go, so we're going to take Dallas in that one. That's our first differing opinion of the year, both of us 2-0 and oh on the two New York teams, I believe, so far this year. So Correct. We will see how that turns out. All right, everyone. Well, I will uh, proceed to go log in and take a look at free agency for week number three and get that squared away starting 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, everyone can go in for free agent Friday. And uh, Mike's going to go take a few layups and three-pointers, and then uh, we will see you all back here next week for the week four edition of Twist. Until then, we'll bid you all a fair good evening. Adios. Adios. Adios.